Hello 7.2 and 7.7. .7. This is Mrs Sheehan. Um, long time no speak. So obviously we've all just um, had our Christmas break um, but prior to that as you absolutely would know I haven't been in school teaching due to um, having to shield because of Covid. Um, however we're now all working from home including yourselves so um, yeah we have a slightly different way of learning but we're getting good at this now it's not the first time that we've done it so we will plow through it we'll do really well with it and i'm hoping that you'll be able to engage and enjoy the lessons that we're going to be doing virtually for you from home so you should now have all um met up with me um, online through teams um, i've scheduled meetings for us to meet at the normal times of our lessons and I should have explained that to you at the start of this lesson. So we'll jump straight into the tasks that I'd like you to do for today. So we're going to continue studying this term Oliver Twist um, but to support that this week um, until Friday we're going to be looking at some reading and comprehension just to get our heads back in the game um, and check our understanding of context of Oliver Twist and very other various other parts of it. So I'd like you to turn to your uh, a new page in your book, put today's date, the 7th of January 2021. Make sure that you put my name in the corner of the page that you're doing. So um, this year you'll have me on my normal Monday, Tuesday, Thursdays, but instead of Miss Danielle, you'll have a teacher called Mrs Spires. So if you're completing work um, at home for Mrs Spires, put her name in the corner. If you're completing work for me, put my name in the corner. So you should have Mrs Sheehan in the corner of your new page in your book. The date, the 7th of January 2021. And then your title is English Home Learning, Reading and Comprehension. Pause the video while you do that neatly. I expect the same level of work as you'd complete in class. So use a, a ruler to underline. Preferably write in pen, unless, you, unless you're somebody that writes in pencil. I know a few of you do prefer to do that and we've agreed that's okay. So pause the video. Once you've done that, come back to the video. Okay, so um, your first task <coughs> is to look at the picture that you see above here. Um, so we have a picture of some um, boys and they're sitting somewhere and doing something. I don't want to give you too much information um, because I think you'll be able to work it out quite easily. And also you've got quite a lot of knowledge about what might be going on in this picture already. So your first task is to spend a few minutes looking at the image that you see. Really study it, who are they? What class do they look like um, they're from? Are they upper, middle or lower class? Uh, what might they be doing? What's their surroundings like? do they all look quite similar or do they look quite different and then what could we infer or what could we work out about that so i'd like you to have a think about that while you look at the picture and then once you feel that you've got a good grasp of what's happening in that picture i'd like you to put task one in your books and then underneath write um sorry oh dear what's happening here okay there we go so question a what is going on in this picture so i wouldn't necessarily write the whole question i'd just put a but then write in full sentences what it is that you think is happening in this picture and then in full sentences answer questions b and c i'd pause the video while you do that this should probably take you about 10 minutes maximum So you should now have answered questions A to C based on the picture of the boys in the workhouse. Um, I'm not going to discuss what your feelings and thoughts were about that. We will do that at the end of the lesson. So hopefully at the end of the lesson when you've completed this video and the tasks, you'll um, be able to um, come back into the meeting with me online and we can then discuss what your thoughts and findings were. So we're going to do a little bit of reading now. This is an extract from Oliver Twist, so something you should be familiar with. Now, I'm going to read the extract below. I'd like you to read along with me as I read it. But then after I've read it and you've read it along with me, you're going to pause the video um, and then reread the extract at least twice. It's only very short. 
and read it by yourself but if you would like to still hear me reading it while you read you can rewind the video and do that too it's whatever works best for you after this we're then going to complete some questions so i will read now <clears throat> so make sure that you can see the text and follow along so uh, charles dickens oliver twist charles dickens dealt with the horrors of the chimney sweeping trade in oliver twist 1838 Having the cruel sweep, Mr. Gamfield described the appropriate way to dislodge a young apprentice stuck in a narrow flue. Mr. Gamfield and the donkey, he smiled joyously when, the, when that person came up to read the bill, for he saw at once that Mr. Gamfield was exactly the sort of master Oliver Twist wanted. Mr. Gamfield smiled too as he pursued, perused the document. Four or five pounds was just the sum he had been wishing for, and... As to the boy with which it was encumbered, Mr. Gamfield, knowing what the dietary of the workhouse was, well knew he would be a nice small pattern. Just the very thing for register stoves. So he spelt the bill through again, from beginning to end, and then, touching his fur cap in, take, in token of humility, accosted the gentleman in the white waistcoat. This here boy, sir, what the parish wants to... Prentice, said Mr. Gamfield. Aye, my man, said the gentleman in the white waistcoat with a condensing smile. What of him? If the parish would like him to learn a light, pleasant trade in a good, spectable, chim chimbly sweeping business, said Mr. Gamfield, I want a prentice, and I am ready to take him. Walk in, said the gentleman in the white waistcoat. Mr. Gamfield, having lingered behind to give the donkey another blow on the head and another wrench of the jaw as a caution not to run away in his absence, followed the gentleman with the white waistcoat into the room where Oliver had first seen him. It's a nasty trade, said Mr. Limkins, when Gamfield had again start stated his wish. Young boys have been smothered in chimneys before now, said another gentleman. That's because they damped the straw afore they lit it in the chimneys to make them come down again, said Gamfield. That's all smoke and no blaze, whereas smoke ain't o use at all in making a boy come down, for it only sends him up to sleep. And that's what he likes. Boys is very obstinate and very lazy. Gentlemen, and there's nothing like a good hot blaze to make them come down with a run. It's humane too, gentlemen, because even if they've stuck in the chimney, Roasting their feet makes them struggle to extricate themselves. <clears throat> so, now you've read that along with me, you may wish to read it um, without me reading, but I'd like you to read through it again with or without me reading along um, at least twice. So, I do that now and then pause the video, come back, sorry, pause the video and then do your reading and then come back and we'll go through the second task. So you should now have reread the uh, extract and have read it three times in total at least. So what I'd like you to do now is work through the comprehension map, which is also attached on Gopher Schools and on Teams, and, it's, and base your answers to the questions on the extract from Oliver that we've just read. So I've tried to differentiate this so to kind of make this task suitable for everybody. So if we quickly look at the comprehension map itself. This is what you should be able to see. So everybody, ideally, I'd like to have a go at all of these yellow boxes. So starting here, you'll work your way across. And the first question you'll ask um, is find three words or phrases that describe the setting in that extract. So you've got one through to 12 questions. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I'd ideally like everybody to have a go at all 12. However, if you are somebody who might require a bit of assistance in class or you struggle with working on your own and you feel that 12 is a lot for you to work through, have a go at just questions one to five. She'll work through question here, number one, down to number five. However, if you're somebody that seems to work really well independently and you're always trying to push yourself, have a go at one to 12 and then additionally have a go at the challenge questions. So these are the challenge questions in the middle. Um, and for this you're going to be looking at the writer's use of language, basically words, and structure. So how they've presented the text, how they've structured 
and developed it and laid it out and what effect this has so this is really quite high in thinking and it's the sort of thing that we start to look at for GCSE so I'd like you to have a go at those now once you've completed the amount that you feel is appropriate for your um, learning level whether it's questions 1 to 12 questions 1 to 5 so for something a bit easier or questions 1 to 12 plus some of the challenge questions come back um, to the meeting and let me know that you'd like to discuss what you found alternatively if you are found any of this confusing or you're struggling just um, put up your hand or just um, ask to speak to me in the meeting um, the virtual meeting sorry which would be our classroom basically and hopefully I will be able to help you from there so I wish you the best of luck um, any questions as I've said I'm sat on my computer at home waiting to hear them from you and help you out so take care and best of luck